Hey everyone, Matt from the Ionic team, here to talk to you about micro front ends for mobile with Ionic Portals. But first, what is a micro front end? Well, think about it like a microservice architecture for the front end, where a microservice architecture is all about taking your back end services and APIs and breaking them up into individual features and backed by different teams and business units. It's the same concept, but for the front end. So we take our web app and break it into pages and features that are owned end to end by a single team or business unit. And then of course, combine them to form a cohesive experience for your end users. So underneath the scenes, there's different architecture, but you're still delivering a really great web app to your end user base. And there's many benefits to micro front end architecture, including the ability to scale your development efforts by working in parallel. So because each team owns a section of your application, one end to end feature set, they're able to build and deploy in parallel without stepping on each other's toes and therefore can launch new features and fix bugs really, really quickly. And as a side benefit, we can reuse those components and web app portion, portions and functionality across applications, whether they're legacy or new apps and experience, experiences. And of course, if they're new ones, this helps accelerate development even further because you're not having to reinvent the wheel. This works really well for desktop websites and web apps, but what about doing this on mobile, right? Well, the secret here is using embedded web view components. These are native web, web browser components that are widely used throughout all of mobile app development today. We use them to display internally facing and external web content and effectively it allows us to reuse our existing web content and apps within native apps. So why should we use web view technology to bring micro front ends to mobile? Well, there's a bunch of benefits here of using the web and all of the great web technology out there. First of all, because you're working in individual feature team slices, it's really easy to update that native app without having to update the larger entire application as a whole, because again, you're working in separate feature teams. Additionally, all of you have in-house web development teams that are building desktop sites and web apps and probably mobile optimized sites as well. So why not scale your development efforts with the team you already have? Your web developers are extremely talented and are used to building for all different types of screen sizes, especially mobile optimized apps and things like that. So it's not that much different type of work and skill set to build for mobile. And when they're used to building in a responsive design fashion, that becomes seamless and invisible to users, that transition between different screen sizes. So they are the experts and definitely know how to accomplish this with ease. And finally, picking web technologies over native, you don't actually have to give anything up from a feature set perspective or developer or user experience. In fact, you still get full access to native device features like the camera, geolocation, and Bluetooth when you're embedding these web apps into the mobile app. So the sky's the limit in what you, what you can do. You're not giving up anything by picking the web over native. Here's some quick examples of companies that are using web views today. One of them is Apple Music, which in my opinion is really raising the bar here and provides a best in class experience that shows that you can mix native and web comp content really effectively. So as we see on the right, on the bottom there, we have the native tab bar and song player controls that are native UI components and they're likely tapping into the songs that are already downloaded on the device and are providing a great experience there. Then you have the rest of that browse experience looking at the user's playlist that has to change often, can be very dynamic with machine learning and custom tailored to the end user. And so we use the web to not only display ads, but these unique playlist cards that can be swapped out really easily without an app update. Next is Netflix. So they've been around for many years now and really came about in the early days of mobile devices. So they had their desktop website before we had mobile apps in the stores for them. And so they're, what they're doing is, is reusing their help section hosted at help.netflix.com. So you can see here, it's all of their entirely web-based content, FAQs and 
are helpful article questions there. And it's probably managed by a content management system by their customer success team behind the scenes, which means they can update it whenever they want. And every user, not just web users, get the updated info and Q&A immediately. No need for App Store updates. But they're still using native navigation, so that seamless experience on mobile looks and feels and acts native for your end users. They really can't tell. So how, do, how can you actually bring this idea of, of you know, micro front ends to your native mobile apps? Well, this is where Ionic Portals comes in, which allows you to bring your embedded web experiences into native mobile apps. And so how Netflix and Apple and those other ones are doing it are using stock WebView technology, the base WebViews that ship with the Apple and Google SDKs for iOS and Android, and those are fine. But what Portals does is provide a supercharged WebView that gives you access to all these different features out of the box so you can focus on building really great apps. And so this is, among many things, safe and secure, backed by the Ionic team, all of our security and mobile experts who have been building and using WebViews and uh, native mobile apps for many years now. Um, again, you get full access to native device features, so no compromises. You're literally leveraging the best and of web and native together. You, and then your native team gets granular control over what the web team can, the pages that the web team can use and access in the native app. So the teams are working in, in cooperation with each other and partnering up to build a really great mobile app. And then finally, something that's very unique to Ionic is our enterprise grade support and services. And this is just part of our backed guarantee that only Ionic can provide for you. Additionally, and probably the most important point, your users experience this like any other native app. So there's a seamless integration moving between web and native, which if you think about it, we, our users expect that. We wouldn't want to have any jarring context switching between pages or features. It has to be seamless. And so you're, and as far as they can tell, it is a real native app because it is. It's just using different technologies under the hood. And we also have unique to the, to the web-based approach, the live update functionality within Ionic Portals, which allows you to push updates directly from the cloud. For all of your web code and images and files, you can up the, update those on demand at any time, bypassing the App Store review process, which is absolutely allowed by the App Store terms and services. And in the micro front end context and portals context, what's great is you can, you only can update the micro front end, whether it's one of them or many of them embedded in the same app. You can update all of them at once or individually. So again, keeping that control in each individual team's hands. But there's no drawbacks for the native team or disruption to them from the native app side because you're not forcing any updates. It's truly independent uh, updates that go out from the cloud. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Josh Thomas, the Portals product manager, and he's going to walk us through an e-commerce demo we've created that shows off Ionic Portals. So take it away, Josh. At Ionic, we created a demo application to help organizations understand and adopt Portals. And I'm going to walk through the scenario for its usage. We have a native application here that's built for iOS using Swift. And we created it as an e-commerce app so that our customers could purchase swag from the Ionic store. Unfortunately, this isn't a real store, so you can't buy that capacitor snapback hat. But let's take a look at the app anyway. So here we have three tabs in the first one. It's a list of products. You can dig into products and read about the details, or we could get assistance on the particular product. We have a cart tab and we can check out. And we also have profile tab. So as we were building this application, one of the things we identified is that maintaining and building this checkout process on the many different platforms that we have isn't really something that we want to keep going or maintain. It's hard enough to build it, but maintaining it in iOS, Android, and web wasn't something that we wanted to take on. So we decided uh, to look at the web experience that already existed and make use of that. But using a stock web view leaves a lot to be desired. And we wanted to share the data and create a great user experience. 
So let's take a look and see how we accomplish this with portals. First, we're going to take a look at the native code that was required in order to do this. First thing we're going to do is add portals to our application. So here you can see we're describing a portal. We're giving it the name of checkout and we're identifying the location on the device, the folder in particular, where the web application lives. And if you were to look at this folder, it's going to contain HTML, CSS, JS, and whatever resources are required to render that web app. So after we've added the portal, we need to find, define where the portal lives. And in this case, when I click checkout, it's actually showing a sheet modal over the top. So this web view is within the checkout view controller. So let's look at the checkout view controller to see how we can define the portal. Portal manager .get portal by name, which is checkout, which is what we defined here. And then we set up initial context. Initial context for a portal is the information that's available to the web application before the first render occurs. So if you need any information right away, you can make it available. We do a little more setup here for that portal web view. And then we're also making use of a plugin. In this case, it's the portals plugin. And we're subscribing to a dismiss event. So a plugin is a way of keeping a consolidated uh, functionality of your native application and exposing it to your web views. So in this case, anytime a web view were to throw an event that was dismiss, this plugin would look for that event and then map it to the corresponding function here in this checkout view controller. And here we can see exactly what it's doing. It's going to dismiss. So if I click cancel, you can see that it dismissed the view. And that's because this dismiss event was thrown from the portals plugin. Now, there's other plugins you can create as well. So the portals plugin is just the one that we provide out of the box. But for this particular application, we needed a little more functionality. And that's why we created the shop API plugin. And here you can see within the shop API plugin, there's additional information and exposed functionality to the portals based web views. Get cart to gather information about what's in the cart. Get user details in order to get the delivery addresses and the payment information. And then checkout result so that we can call that whenever we've completed a checkout and clear out the cart. So now you've got a high level understanding of how you can define a portal and expose functionality from the native perspective. But let's take a look from the website. So this is a single page app you can see here in the browser that was built using Ionic components and React. Not that you need to use React and Ionic for your web content, but it does make for a pretty great experience. Um, you can see the development for this was done using a browser and VS Code, but obviously your web team can use whatever tools they're most familiar with. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at this page that we're looking at right now, the checkout page. And this checkout page depends on a, piece, a couple pieces of information, cart and user. Cart obviously being the total and user having deliver, delivery addresses and payment information. But this view is also making use of the portals plugin. So let's see how we're using this particular plugin. It's wired up to the cancel button. So if I were to click cancel within the application, you can see that it's publishing a dismiss event. Let's go back and look at the native code for this. Here in the view controller, we subscribe to the dismiss event. And then we make the view go away based on that. So here, if I click dismiss, it's dismissing the overall view. But that wasn't the only plugin that we're using here. We're also gathering the cart and user details, and we're using context for this within React. And this information is coming from a data provider. So let's look at the data provider. And here, we're gathering user details and cart information. And we're also prompting for the checkout. Here, you can see for get user details, 
it's using shopapi.getUserDetails. And for get cart, it's using shopapi.getCart. Now, it looks as though this is calling directly into another JavaScript library. But what's actually happening is that these requests are proxied through the portal into the native application so that the native application can return these results to the web view. Here we can see here's the web implementation of the Shop API plugin. And this is all using TypeScript so that web developers can know exactly the structure of information that's being returned and the functionality that's exposed. Now, you might have noticed based on this naming convention and recognized it from the Shop API plugin from native. Let's go back and look at it. You can see here the names are the same. Get cart, get user details, and check out result. So whenever get cart is called, it's returning the data from native back down through the portal to the web application. So now that we've seen how you can interact from web to native, Let's go back to the native application again and just walk through this step by step. First thing I did was set up my portal. I defined where it lived. I set it up within my checkout view controller. So I click checkout. It shows the checkout view controller in a sheet modal in this case. And then I can click cancel, which is a web-based button that goes back and cancels the view and tells the native application to dismiss the modal or I can complete the checkout and place my order. But let's make sure, let's, let's grab an extra hat here because I think Matt needs one. We place our order, dismisses and goes away. So as we're looking at this application, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but within the app delegate, we actually defined three different portals, not just the checkout. And that's because this application has just more, more than just one portal being used. We have one for checkout, help, and the user profile. But I can tell you, but let me prove it to you. And that's using another tool we have here called Inspect. Inspect allows me to look at an active native application and highlight the web views that are active. So let's go back here, choose a product, go to help. And you can see here, Highlighted in blue is the web content, and this is where the portal exists. As I click back, it's going back to the previous page. We already know about the, the one for checkout, but let's look at it anyway. So I click checkout, it opens the sheet modal, and you can see here everything within that sheet modal is a web view. And the last one that you probably didn't notice is the profile page. This is also a web view and I can prove it. We're looking at the web content right now and inspecting this. And this is what we mean by this seamless integration, that it's difficult for you to identify where web exists and where native exists, and you can go back and forth between them within your native applications, and your users can't tell. And because you're creating this nice user experience, um, you should have happy web developers being able to contribute to your native app and happy native developers not having to write out every single one of these pages. Thanks, Josh, for that awesome Ionic Portals demo. Everyone, I invite you to check out the completely open source code on our Ionic GitHub. And of course, you can start building for free with Ionic Portals today. So please check it out at ionic.io slash portals. Thank you.